Hey guys, welcome to another Roblox Subdivision tutorial. It's been a long time since I last uploaded the tutorial video and for today's video, we're gonna be talking about landing. Um, to start off, my name is Edo. I'm one of the instructors for Flight Line Community. I'm part of the Pilot Academy and of course the ATC sector. And today we're gonna be talking about landing. Um, you're probably going to ask why do we have to learn about landing when simply all you have to do is bother the aircraft. Um, in this video, I'm going to be showing you the proper procedure on how to do it and we're going to be using Flightline because it has, um, as far as I have observed, it has the physics that we're looking for for a simulator for Roblox. However, it's still not up to par with the simulators that I'm using such as P3D or x 11. For today's video, we're going to be using the Saab 340 in Flightline and of course, I'm going to be departing well and sol. And yeah, we're going to be discussing the mechanics of the landing. Of course, to start off the video, we're going to be talking about three topics. Number one is basic movement of the aircraft. Number two is taming the aircraft. And number three is doing the procedures. Um, do take note though, I'm going to be using flight line. So basically, I don't know if this stuff is applicable to other simulators that are just affiliated with Roblox, such as PTFS, AirX, and etc. Without further ado, let's start with number 1, which is basic movements of the aircraft. So basically, there are 3 basic movements of the aircraft, and this picture is from Google. Don't even ask why I stole it. Number 1, let's talk about the pitch. The pitch is basically your vertical speed, and there are only 2 scientific ways to do it. Number 1 is the higher you go, the lower your airspeed. And of course, number 2, the lower you go, the, lo the higher the airspeed. Basically, two components are having an advantage and of course, a disadvantage. And of course, number two is your roll. Basically, this is your movement from left to right or being able to move from one place to another. A lot of people are still mistaken about the roll versus the yaw, in which this we will discuss about this later. For now, let's focus about what is roll. The primary movement for rolling is what you call rotating. Basically, rotate to the left or you're rotating to the right. Number three is yaw. Basically, it's the same as rolling. However, it's different. Somehow, there's still a difference between the two movements and here. Yaw is not caused by elevators nor ailerons but of course by the rudder. This is where you can use the crabbing technique, in which we will talk about crabbing later. Now of course that we know the basic movements of the aircraft, I think it's time for us to move on to number 2, which is taming the aircraft. Taming, from the word itself, from Google, means make less powerful and easier to control. However, that's not the case for us who flies the aircraft. Basically, the keyword we're looking for is easier to control or basically having a full control over the aircraft. All pilots, of course, have to go undergo training for a certain aircraft. For example, I would like to fly the Airbus 320. Of course, I wouldn't just fly it because of the side stick and that's it. I have to undergo training, simulators, and other procedures that would make me an A320 rated pilot. And by what I just said, that's what I meant by taming the aircraft and today we will discuss on taming the Saab 340. Now, when it comes to taming the Saab 340, knowing that it's a propeller aircraft, propeller aircraft tend to have a force and let's say the Cessna 172. The Cessna 172's propeller turns to the right and of course, knowing that it's a single engine turbo aircraft, there is a big amount of force that you'll have to battle. Basically, when you push the throttle all the way to the full or basically full throttle during takeoff, your rudder would be abused by going to the left. Of course, for first timers like me, I'll probably have a hard time handling the aircraft even during takeoff just because I can't handle the center line or any other aspects that would make use of the yaw movement of the aircraft or the rudders. Of course, there are also other certain situations that we have to make sure that the aircraft is fully under our control. 
for example, it's raining, and of course, we have cast winds, and of course, cross winds. To make the situation worse, let's say we have engine failure and other stuff. As I mentioned earlier, pilots have to take a special training for a certain aircraft to be called a rated pilot for that aircraft. Basically, that means that any situation that can be covered for the aircraft is already learned by that certain pilot and pretty much that's why you can call them an aircraft rating pilot. Going back to the topic, like I said, there are certain situations that we must make sure that the aircraft is fully under control. And one of those situations are crosswinds and a lot of the times when we fly in flight line, we know the winds drastically change 180 degrees or more. However, in flight line, there's no what you call the propeller force or anything. Basically, we're just gonna be controlling the aircraft and under the mouse and here we are starting with number three doing the procedures and a bunch of techniques but before that we have to make sure that we know these three basic terminologies for landing number one is retard i know this may sound vulgar however they said that this was an original french word which means to idle so basically when we say retard you idle the throttle and pretty much you hear that on Airbus a lot. Flaring is a landing procedure wherein you have to put your aircraft nose um, slightly upwards making sure that the landing gear touches first before the nose gear. And of course, last but not the least, call outs. Now, you're probably wondering why, why are call outs a is a basic terminology for landing it's basically because there are two kinds of callouts. For flight line, we have the automated callouts and of course, the human callouts. And now that we're done with these three basic terminologies, now let's talk about the mechanics and techniques behind landing. Of course, when we're going to land, we have to make sure that we have to kiss the touchdown zone or the big rectangle marking on the runway and here's a picture shown above. Of course, number two is that we should have a stable approach. There's this what we call the ILS or the instrument landing system in which is a kind of precision approach that most pilots use until landing. The ILS has two basic parts, which is the localizer and of course the glide slope. And we're not gonna be discussing that today because that's a very big topic when it comes to ILS. Now I'm gonna be showing you two videos of my landing wherein the first video is that I would follow the ILS and I would retard my throttle. And of course, the number, the second video is going to be a video wherein I also follow the ILS and I'll be crabbing, but I won't be retarding the throttle. And then number three is that we should flare usually at 30 feet. And at 30 feet, that's where we basically retard the throttle and start the flaring and we have to make sure that we actually aim for the touchdown zone. Number four is that we should prioritize center line, especially when we're landing. We don't have to treat the runway like a highway. And of course, center lines can be very challenging, especially when there's bad winds or cross winds, or basically it's not your day to day and that the winds are just against you. And of course, number five, practice and enjoy. Not all landings are always good, nor battery. Sometimes there are cases that we don't really have to battery the aircraft, such as a wet runway, and there's just a situation that comes up that you won't really be smooth, be able to smoothen the landing. However, you're gonna be having a firm landing. Um, there's this quote that they say that a good landing is a landing that you can walk away from, and just keep that in mind that this is just a simulator. You can come back anytime, you can respawn, and etc.
Now you guys have seen my verse landings in these two videos, I'm going to be talking about the mechanics behind them and the pros and cons. On the first video, you guys have observed that I actually retarded the throttle and I managed to touch down at the touchdown zone. My center line wasn't really good, but I tried to recover it and I managed to do so. And you guys can see that the runway consumption, I didn't even take full of it and I just vacated as soon as possible. For the second video, you guys have observed that I didn't return my throttle and there were two things that I managed to miss. Number one, I didn't land in the touchdown zone. And number two, of course, my runway consumption was larger than the first video. However, the two good things I had is the center line and of course, I smoothened out the landing. What I'm trying to say here is that safety is our number one priority, especially in aviation. Since we're carrying a bunch of other passengers, usually 50 plus. That was just a honest review of my own landings. If you guys have any sort of constructive criticism or additionals, feel free to comment down below. I want you guys to know that we're actually flying with passengers and cargo. We're not flying with landing judges. So don't feel pressured when landing. So that's basically all for this landing video. I tried to shorten it out and pretty much I just can't. Somehow, I'll try to shorten the other videos, maybe less than 10 minutes. I'll try to fit in every information I can, and maybe I'll target 5 minutes and below. For now, just sit back and relax. If you guys have any more uh, questions or doubts, feel free to comment down below. And of course, I would like to thank the others who actually comment down below and help me and add additionals so that I could be corrected next time. Once again, my name is Chief or Edo and I'll see you again in the next tutorial video.